everyone, and today we've actually got two items to unbox, and uh, I didn't quite get what I thought was coming, and I'm going to send an email about that, but I'm still really excited about both of these, and uh, this is actually a first. I've been working and writing for Pocketables for several years at this point, and I've never had phones to open on camera. So we have the Cat S62 and Cat S22 Flip. These are rugged Android smartphones. Uh, the S22 Flip is an Android Go device. And the S62 is actually a full, just outright Android smartphone. Um, so let's see here. There's a scan to play thing on the box. Let's let's try that before we get too far ahead of ourselves. VMP.mobi. Validate your product. Uh, okay. Um, so that's just a certificate of authenticity thing. I thought it was going to be like a little intro video to the phone. Anyway, uh, both boxes have that. Uh, I'm not going to show the sides with my uh, IEMIs and my SIM IDs. So, and then both of these just have, so this one says it was printed with soy ink. I don't see that on the smaller S22. Um, and then we've just got our normal stuff. No real marketing information on here. Just, uh, they come with, Comes with Google, Google Chrome for EEA, uh, all rights reserved Caterpillar, complies with part 15 of the FCC rules. The S22 Flip does call out that it has an HAC rating and 3T3 for hearing aid compatibility. And they both say that they contain a lithium ion battery and not to throw it out. Uh, let's start with the more visually exciting device, I think. The S22 Flip. So we have the phone itself, which is a absolutely massive flip phone. I have not held a flip phone like this since I had a Motorola i860 Brute. And that thing was a beast that you could just throw across the room, except for there was a flaw with the hinge that would cause the internal spring to bust through the hinge shell. Um, so that's, that's interesting. And we've got a two-pin charger on the back, which I think the S62 also has. We've got a screw, which actually threads in for a battery door. I think I have to take that all the way out. Let's grab a screwdriver. With a... It's not a screw. Not that you need a screwdriver for this. You could do this with a dime pretty easily. I'm sure that's the intent is that it's fairly field serviceable. Ugh. All right, so that pops off and we can see one of our hints that these are not normal phones, a big gasket. And then there's the battery itself, model BTE 2000. This is a 2000 milliamp hour, 7.6 watt hour battery. Pretty typical. Um, battery cell here, nothing super spectacular. Under the cell we have two things. We have a SIM card slot and a micro SD card slot. And these are pretty typical of this style design. Slide to open. Come on. There we go. They flip up and you'd put your card down and then you'd lock it in place. And then you would reinstall your battery and then put your battery door back on. And I think my SIM card should be compatible with both of these, since these are both theoretically T-Mobile devices. Right, let's tighten that screw in. Oh, there we go. All right, that's all back in. Uh, let's start on this side where we have a USB port which is a Type-C port, which is good. I believe this is a 2.0 port, so that's slow data, but good to see charging compatibility. Volume up, volume down. Nothing of note on the top. On this side, we have an, an action, probably power, and uh, I wonder if these do some sort of push-to-talk. 
Actually, no, the power button's inside, so I bet this is just a, an action and a push to talk button. Screen on the front, camera on the front, internal camera, and I can see a speaker and a microphone hole there. Overall, pretty typical design for what would have been a flip phone, but just bigger and ruggedized, and as I mentioned already, this one does run Android. So let's go ahead and let it power on. And while it does its boot stuff, let's see what else is included. So that flips open, and we get one, two, three little packages, and then this is our quick start guide, limited warranty statement, all that stuff and the terms and conditions for activating on T-Mobile, basically. So we get three things here, and I'm betting... So this is a Type A to Type C cable. This is a Type C to 3.5 millimeter. And then this is just a standard 5 volt 2 amp power brick. Nothing lightning fast, no quick charge, no USB-C power delivery. Honestly, kind of what I expected on a device like this. Alright, and let's go ahead and peel this so you can read what's on the screen. So I'm going to hit start. And we're going to skip connecting to a network. And we're going to just skip connecting to any internet service whatsoever at the moment. And we'll accept the default date and times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm not going to bother with a screen lock. Yes, I, I can relock it later when I'm done with the video. Man, the amount of stuff that they make you go through and accept these days just to use the phone is astounding. All right. So here we have, and let's actually bring this down, our S22 Flip. And this is just a, it, it's an Android device. So... All of the normal stuff that you're used to seeing on Android is scaled to a... God, what size is that? This is a 2.8 inch... six forty by 480 screen. And did it... Did it go to sleep? Is the battery dead out of the box? Man... I think the battery is dead. Okay. That's not the end of the world. No, the battery is at 94%. I just didn't know how to wake up the phone. Sweet. All right. So, let's poke at that. So this is <laughs> this is a 640 by 480 2.8 inch screen. It has been a long time since I saw an Android device with a screen this small. Now, that doesn't mean that it's suddenly unusable, but... I'm not going to be inclined to, uh, like, use a swipe keyboard. You're probably, well, maybe, maybe I could. Let's open something that'll give me a keyboard UI. And, yeah, actually. That's perfectly usable, not that there's any internet on it. Um, which we will connect it to the internet in a minute. We'll do the same thing as, as the S62. So anyway, it's a 2.8 inch 640-480 screen. Um, the one on the front is 128 by 128, and I don't think that this one is touch at all, which is a bummer, because I can see people who might want to use this for like a selfie, and take that that way. 
And let's see, we've got Android 11 Go Edition. This is a non sensitive glass, Class 1 Division 2 Group ADT4. If memory serves, all of that means that this is non-sparking when broken and therefore should not cause explosions. Uh, Milspec A10H, IP68, water and dust proof. They says, claim they drop tested it six feet onto steel. I don't have like a steel plate that I can drop things on, but I can certainly drop it eight or 10 feet onto concrete. And uh, let me know in the comments below if that's something you want to see me do, both open and closed. I think I already mentioned this, Android 11 Go Edition. This is not a super phone. It's not an S21. It's not a uh, S9, or sorry, not S9, OnePlus 9T or whatever they're calling it these days. Extra loud speakers, large physical buttons, two-year warranty, Gorilla Glass 5. I already opened it up, saw the battery was a 2000 milliamp hour battery. This is a Qualcomm 215, which is not a super powerful chip. I want to say that's a quad core, like two gigahertz. But let's just double check. Four cores, four threads, 1.3 gigahertz, Cortex A53. Sweet. Um, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage included, 128 gigs support for micro SD cards. We're going to test that. It may very well work just fine with a 256 gig card, um, but they may not have seen reason to test anything bigger, and everything else is just basically what we read off. Although this one does not have the T-Mobile SIM that should have theoretically been in the box, which is fine because it's a review sample. So that's the S22 flip. Pretty, pretty basic on the Android side, really big on the, this is a durable phone. And the purpose of a phone like this is people who are on job sites, people who are tradesmen, people who would probably just destroy an S21 but still want some of the Android features. The fact that this does run Android, even if it's a cut down version, means that you should be able to run things like Slack, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, uh, no problem. Let's go ahead and take a look at how the camera looks. Honestly, I don't think this camera is gonna win any um, what's the word I want to use here? Any awards? But that looks sharp and good. Let's go ahead and I'll pull this off and I'll, I'll set up my studio and I'll do a side by side with its camera, the S62, my OnePlus 7 Pro, and uh, my uh, Yi M1, and then just do a side by side. We've got a couple of things that are pretty tricky for some lenses that we'll put in the field and do that. And then I'll take them all outside and do the same thing on like an overcast day. Uh, let's see, what resolution did this come out to? Five megapixels. Honestly, not gonna win any awards for best camera, but a five megapixel sensor is pretty respectable. Um, overall, everything so far seems quick, although let's, let's connect it to the Wi-Fi. So we're going to open up Chrome and we're going to do two things. We're going to go to fast.com. And just see what we pull. Then we're going to go to the Pocketables website and see how that looks. So I think we may only have a 2.4 gigahertz wireless N radio in here, which is a bummer. And let's just see if I can validate that. Where 
at the bottom, Wi-Fi preferences. There's nothing in here that'll tell me what I'm looking for. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and hit Pocketables. And it is trying to update every app in the background. But there it is. There's Paul's Google Meet article. Here's my Free Game Friday article, although I don't know why it didn't load the header image. I clicked on the wrong article. There it goes. I think it was having an issue with the fact that that header image is a 4K screenshot, basically. But let's let's watch the video. Let's do it. Now this should have opened the YouTube Go app instead of just opening it in the browser. I wonder. So it doesn't support auto-rotate from the looks of it. Not that I expected it to. I mean, who wants to go around like this watching video? The contrast on this screen is not super great. I mean, this is a very dark scene and I don't think it's coming through well on camera at all. I think all you're seeing is the reflection on the screen. Although, can we crank the brightness up? Looks better. Not perfect. Um, this should, I mean, in person, this isn't bad. I can see what's going on, although I wouldn't want to watch a feature length film like this. The screen is really great when there's bright stuff on it. Um, should be readable in direct sunlight. I'm going to go out on a sunny day and do that. But it, it's just not... I mean, is it OLED? It might might not be OLED. This might be SLCD. Uh, it, it's not what you're used to on a flagship phone. Because it's targeting a different market. So anyway, um, that's the S22 Flip. I'll poke at it some more in a full review with some, like, performance testing, get it set up, connect it to Android Play, install a couple of apps, and see how that goes. I already mentioned we're going to take some test pictures, but let's get to the one that was sent incorrectly, technically. Um, so this is the Cat S62. And I had asked for the S62 Pro, and I'm still going to send an email and see if we can get that. And the big difference between the two, there's a couple of small differences, but the big difference is the S62 Pro has a thermal camera, which would mean we'd be able to look at all sorts of fun pictures of stuff um, while we're benchmarking and reviewing things. In the meantime, the S62 is still an absolute beast. So here we have a slab of Android brutality basically um, same thing here ip68 mil spec 810h uh, one of the other key differences between the s62 and the s62 pro is like the s22 flip the s62 is certified to be non-sparking the s62 pro not so much um, let's do a quick tour on the side so obviously power button volume up volume down we have what looks like the um, hex screws on the side, so this should be fairly serviceable. We've got three here, two there. Bottom, USB-C port, microphone, speaker grill. Top has all the good stuff that we're used to. Speaker, uh, selfie camera, another what looks like another microphone pinhole. 
this side here. As I mentioned, there's a couple more screws. And we have a SIM and SD card tray. And this is a little different than what I'm used to seeing. Is that this, like, pops out? Oh, I see. There's a little eject pin. So there's probably a SIM card tool in the accessories. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, on the back, we see something familiar. So we see this two-pin charging. And I think these are compatible with the same charger. Fingerprint sensor, dual camera setup, and a flash. Now on the Pro, one of those cameras would be a thermal camera. On this, I think it's not actually dual camera. It looks like one of these might be a depth of field sensor. Um, we'll find out in a minute when we power it on. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Did I hold that long enough? There we go. Let it boot. Will we see what's in the box? So we have this time a type C AC adapter, a C to C cable, a much thicker book, our SIM card tool. And this is where, if you had ordered this from T-Mobile, this one's available direct from T-Mobile, there would have been a card in here with a SIM card. And then what is this dongle? A type A to type C dongle so that you can plug your C to C cable into older chargers. That is a fascinating decision. And the reason I say that's a fascinating decision is there's no actual need to have included this with the phone. Because the phone comes with a Type-C charger. And that Type-C charger, by the way, is rated for 5 volt, 3 amp, 9 volt, 2 amp, 12 volt, 1.5. So this should be one of the quick charge variants, or USB-C power delivery, I should say. And it is coated in plastic. All right. So there's that. Um, but anyway, so there's no value in including this. I would have rather they included a Type-C to headphone adapter. But they didn't. They included instead a dongle you don't actually need. Maybe the assumption is that whoever would use something like this has Bluetooth headphones of some sort. We're going to skip that part. And we'll do the offline setup. And while it's doing all that, I want to pop out this SIM card tray and see how it's assembled. Because that is a weird design. So if I push here, out comes. I don't think I pushed in far enough. No? So, yeah, that is tricky to get out, which is a bummer. In fact, I'm going to use a screwdriver here. So the SIM card tray doesn't quite eject far enough to be easily grabbed. There's these little um, notches on it that you should be able to grab with your fingernail, and I just could not get one. Um, yeah, date and time's fine. Accept all the stuff. Skip the screen lock for now. So this is a full metal SIM card tray, and we have a SIM slot, or sorry, micro SIM slot, and an SD card slot, so that's interesting. And already I can see that this is just a much bigger and more readable screen and will be for a lot of things. I'm just going to put this back in for now. Is that why I didn't want to? What is this? This is a QR code with the serial number and the IEMI hidden on a little piece of paper that can be slidden in and out of the phone. 
and I think it may have been part partially responsible for why the SIM card tray did not want to come out. Um, and the reason for that, and I don't know where it went, there was a little piece of paper from the punch out on that that did not, uh, that was in the phone. It's a little, little hanging piece of paper, small manufacturing thing there. Not entirely unexpected with something like that. So let's turn this to full brightness. This, unlike the S22 Flip, runs the full version of Android and they said it was Android 10 with an update to Android 11. So let's see what's actually on this phone. Yeah, Android 10. Okay, so I'll find out once I get this fully activated if the Android 11 update is available now or if it is going to be available in the future. Obviously, I would prefer that it's here today, but such is life. Um, overall, this is a much larger, much faster device. Still not going to keep up with your flagship phones on the benchmark. Not that it's supposed to. So let's see here. Under the About Phone, do we list the hardware specs anywhere? We just say S62. All right. Uh, does the Quick Start Guide say it, or do I have to bring it up somewhere else? Um, it says that we support different SIM sizes, our warranty statement, and then all the same stuff again in Spanish. So, let's see here. If memory serves, this is a 660. It has 4 or 6 gigs of RAM. Alright, so... Quick rundown on the specs. This is a 5.7 inch full HD plus 2160 by 1080 screen. Our cameras are an impressive sounding array of a 48 megapixel plus 2 megapixel rear camera. We are rated for mil spec 810H and 6 IP68, as I already mentioned. Same drop test, same waterproof, vibration, sand, mist, pressure resistant, etc., etc. Uh, non incentive class 1, division 2, group A, D. The T4, just like the S22, so that we get a 4,000 milliamp hour battery USB-C that is C2.0. This is still not C3.0. Um, Qualcomm Snapdragon 660 with 4 gigs of RAM. This has a 128 gigs of storage included, and it says it supports a 256 gig micro SD card, and then all of our normal stuff. Uh, Neither one of these is a 5G device, by the way. They are both LTE capable, however. So let's get a quick look at if they included anything other than the fancy background on this. And it looks like we do get the Cat Toolbox app, which I've never heard of before. And that sends me to their website. Neat. Um, let's go ahead and connect it to Wi-Fi, I guess, and do... A little bit of Wi-Fi testing first. All right, so we are connected to Wi-Fi. Much quicker to type on the larger screen. Why am I still only getting 30 megs, 45 megs a second? What is something up with my Wi-Fi at home right now? You know what? Neither one of these speed tests is accurate. My desktop is pulling down 800 megs a second, restoring some data that I backed up. I totally forgot that I had that running. So neither speed test I just ran is valid. I'll rerun those when I'm not burning through nearly a gigabit um, during the full review. So anyway, all right, so Toolbox appears to be the only actual like app that Cat included, and it looks like it just brings us to a list of Caterpillar's apps. Finance quote, remote asset monitor, cycle timer, all sorts of those things. So if you owned some of their job site equipment, you would use some of these. 
And that's part of it. These are, you know, part of a cohesive ecosystem where you wouldn't just buy one of these. You would be a large construction company that might own a couple of their generators or, you know, a couple backhoes or bulldozers or something that, yeah, I can connect to and find out where is my bulldozer this week. Or I can use their financial quote, you know, generate an estimate for a job, all those sorts of things that uh, might be, what's the word I want to use here, synergistic for them as a company to sell you. Um, some of this stuff is a little, a little amusing to see and uh, stuff I'm surprised that they included. Like, I don't know what farmware is. It looks like there's a calculator for unit conversion stuff, bubble level, those type of things that I would expect to see for a phone for uh, used by a tradesman. And then there's other stuff like a geocaching app or breeding wheel because someone's using this on the farm to keep track of when they need to breed their cattle. Um, so th it's just an interesting thing to see. And then other stuff like AccuWeather. Clearly, these are not all just Caterpillar apps. These are some that they're suggesting All right, but otherwise, much brighter, much easier to see. Let's hit the Pocketables website. That loaded much quicker. It even loaded fast enough to load an ad. Love it. Gonna have to talk to Paul about that. Welcome back, everyone. So, Welcome unlike back to the installment of Free Game Friday, this week we have a Monk the Sleep Enhanced Edition. Let's just jump into the game footage. And you found it. Yeah, that's playing back about right. Um, and this part of this is that game. That game was terrible and dark. But it's a horror game, so what do I expect? Anyway, so that was nice and snappy. Web browsing seems to be fine. I'll, I'll do more testing. This one I will probably use as my daily driver for a few weeks. Um, in fact, I wonder if I just pop my SIM card in if it'll work. We're going to find out. Anyway, so that's the, the quick tour. Both of these will get a dedicated video reviewing them. Um, you know what? I'm going to try using both for at least a week and see what I do and don't love. There's some stuff that I just know is not going to be conductive to using the flip like I, I can't see myself using discord on it <laughs> I, I just can't same thing for uh what was i gonna say like i, I can't see myself watching a, uh, a video on plex during my lunch on the flip i do on this uh, and i'm gonna ask about the two pin contact charger here and see well, I'm going to see what one of those costs and see how they work. These could be completely different voltages than the USB adapters. I am also going to ask about the S62 Pro. Like I said, I really wanted that thermal sensor so that when we're working with heat sinks or fanless mini PCs or some of the external SSDs that I'm not 100% sure on their thermal solution, that I could get a picture of and have something to show you guys. Um, so I'm hoping to hear back positively on that. So depending on what happens there, this S62 may get replaced with the S62 Pro, which is functionally equivalent. The biggest differences between the two are the thermal sensor and the 62 Pro is not rated for 
some of those non-combustible items that the 22 and 62 are. That said, the big advantage that these both have, for a lot of customers, are I can go buy one of these from T-Mobile today. The S62 Pro I would have to buy outright or from a payment plan from uh, CAT themselves. Which is not the end of the world, especially if you're, you know, a contractor that says, I need 20 of these for my work crews. But anyway. <coughs> um, we are going to do some impact-related testing. Now, there's a couple of different ways I can do some of the water tests. And I'm going to look up exactly what depth some of that is and depending on how deep it is we may have to simulate it and what i mean by that is if it says that it's rated for 30 meters of water i don't have a 30 meter water column but i could build a one meter water column and then pressurize it so that it was similar to a 30 meter water column since it's a a known factor every 10 feet or 10 meters is this much additional pressure if I took some clear schedule 80 PVC capped off the end with a, a cap on one end and a threaded insert on the other I could then take my air compressor and pressurize it to meet that yeah I know there's no sim thanks for telling me um, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet but if you guys have any ideas or any specific tests you want to see done on these, let me know in the comments below. Um, I do want to be up front and say that Caterpillar sent both, of, or I, I guess, the, is their name Cat or is it still Caterpillar? Caterpillar. Caterpillar sent both of these phones in for review, and uh, that will in no way sway our, our opinion realistically. These are kind of the only game in town. Um, there's not a lot of options for rugged Android phones. So, in some ways, they're just going to win by default. Now, they still need to do all the things I expect a phone to do, especially the S62. I'm actually likely going to be harder on the S62 than I am the S22 Flip, because I recognize that this as a flip phone is not going to be ideal for certain things I use my OnePlus 7 for. This, however, is just a ruggedized, fairly standard slab, and therefore should be perfectly serviceable in my pocket for everything and anything. All right, anyway, um, like I was saying, Caterpillar sent these in. And as always, I want to thank anyone who helps support Pocketables, either via Amazon affiliate or by supporting us on Patreon. It's support like that that helps make videos like this possible. I would like to thank Electrix for providing our opening and closing themes. And finally, thank you for watching.